Hello, viewers. You're welcome to section 10.4, which is about solving nonlinear systems of equation. So this is section 10.4. Now, uh, in 10.11, we saw a linear system of equation. So for a nonlinear system, we said a nonlinear system of equation is a system of equation in which one or more equation of the system are nonlinear. So if you have an equation where one of the system is nonlinear, one of the equation is nonlinear. So even if you have the others to be linear, as long as one is nonlinear, then that system becomes a nonlinear system. Uh, just for example, if you have this, uh, let's say you have these equations. You have x, x squared plus 2y equals to 1. And you have, let's say, x minus y equals to, let's say, 3. Now, this system is nonlinear because of what? The first equation. You see, the first, the second equation is, this is nonlinear, right? But you see that this is linear. But you cannot, we cannot call this a linear system. It's a nonlinear system because one of the equation is what is nonlinear. Now, if you look at these systems, we have some system here. Uh, look at this one. Both are nonlinear, so it's nonlinear. This also both are nonlinear. It's also a nonlinear system. So how do we solve a nonlinear system? It's simply the solution of a nonlinear system. It's, it's simply the point of intersection where the graph intersects. So we said any point of intersection of the graph of the equation is the solution of the system. So for example, if you look at this one, this look at these two psych, uh, these are ellipses, right? Now, if you look at these two ellipses here, ellipses, you see this is the first one and this is the second one. And uh, if you draw this graph of these ellipses, you have how many point of intersection? Four point of intersection between the purple and the blue. So these point of intersections, these are called the one, the solution of the system. So if you can graph, you graph, and the point of intersection gives us the solution. Now, if you look at this, these are two cycle, I think, yes. Now, this is the point of intersection of these two. So it means this system has only two solution. And uh, if you look at this one here, this is like a, an ellipse, is a system, consists of an ellipse and also a hyperbola. And you can see there is no intersection between these two. So it means the solution, there is no, this system, which is nonlinear, has no solution. All right, but how do we solve systems analytically without graphing? And that is what we are going to see shortly. So if you want to solve a nonlinear system, um, there are two methods. The first one is the substitution method, which is this one here, the substitution method. And it says, how, when do we use substitution method? We use substitution method if one of the equation is linear and other is nonlinear, right? And uh, for elimination method, we use elimination method if both equations are what? Are nonlinear, not linear, but they have the same degree. So let's see example, like example one now, you see that we have the system already one is linear and equation two is nonlinear, right? So the best method is we use substitution method. So you can see from one, from equation one, we can make a substitution we can see that y can be written as 3 minus 5x. So what do we do? Similar to what we did in 10.1, we substitute y 
now in equation two. So that equation two, remember this is equation two, y is x squared minus three x minus five, right? So now we substitute y, so here will become three minus five x is equals to x squared minus three x minus five. I uh, will try to rearrange everything to make here uh, zero. So this will be x squared minus three x plus five x. Then you have minus five minus three. And uh, this will become x squared plus 2x minus 8, right? And this is nothing but we can factorize this to be x minus 2 and x plus 4. So this means that x minus 2 equals to 0 or x plus 4 equals to 0. So we have x is equals to 2, or x is minus 4. Now we can get the y values here. So x equals to 2. If x equals to 2, this implies that y equals to 3 minus 5 times 2. And that will be 3 minus minus 10, so y is equals to minus 7. So it means one solution is 2 and minus 7. Now, if x is minus 4, this implies that y is 3 minus 5 minus 4. So y is 3 plus 20. And this is y is equals to 23. So it means we will have minus 4 and 23. So we have only two solutions. Our solution set will consist of 2 minus 7 and then minus 4 and 23. All right, now for example two, uh, we can see that both of these equations are nonlinear. And they're almost the same powers for x and y. So we can attempt to use, uh, we can attempt to use elimination. So uh, to use elimination, let's first of all label this equation here. So this is, let's call this one equation one. And this is equation two. So let's say we want to eliminate, uh, if we want to eliminate X now, we can just multiply this by, we can just multiply this equation by what? We can just multiply it by two. So once we multiply this by two, this will become, 4 over x minus 6 over y, that's equals to 2. And this other one will still remain as this one. Yes. So this is what it will be. We only multiply this by, by, by 2, right? This one we can say multiply by 1, which is the same. So now we can add these two equations, if we add here, uh, what will happen here is that we will have 4 over x and 4 over x will cancel. So you just have minus 6 over y plus what? 7 over y. It's e equals to 2 plus 1, which is 3, right? So here, this is just going to be minus 6 plus 7 uh, so this is just going to be 1 over y. It's equals to, it's equals to 3, right? And so what does that mean? It means that y 
is equals to 3y. So y is what 1 over 3. So if you have y to be 1 over 3, then we can find what is x. We can use any of the equations. So we can say substitute y equals to 1 over 3 in, you can use any of the equation. We can use equation, equation 1. It's fine. But what is equation 1? Remember equation 1 is this equals to 1, right? So just substitute y. So this will be 2 over x minus 3 over y is 1 over 3. And this is 2 over x minus this over this. If you look at this, this is just going to be 3 over 1 times what? 3 over 1, yeah? E equals to 1. So we have 2 over x minus 9 equals to 1. So 2 over x is just 1 plus 9. And 2 over x is what? Is 10. So which means that 2 is equals to 10x. So x is going to be 2 over 10, which is 1 over 5. Right. So we have our x and we have our y. So see, this system has only one solution. And that solution is 1 over 5 for x and 1 over 3 for y. So you can see the first example we saw, we have two solutions, but this example too has only one solution. Okay. Now number three. So for number three, it's a little bit uh, a difficult question. It says if A, B, and C, D are solutions of this, then we want to find what is A, C plus B, D. Now, this is a little bit uh, difficult question. So, uh, but uh, let's call this one equation one. Just stay with equation one. And then equation two. So what I will do is here, if you try to eliminate directly, you will have issues because um, you will not be able to work with only one. Uh, if we eliminate x squared, you will still have x and y. So what we will do is take this equation two, this one, let's take equation two. Remember, if you look at this, you have x squared. Oh, let me, let me write it. This one, we can write this as x squared minus, we can factorize this as what, we can use minus 2xy plus what, 3xy plus 6y squared equals to zero. That is equation two, right? I'm just rewriting equation two. So, and this we can factorize as x into x minus 2y plus 3, 3y three three is common. And then we can have x also. Is it going to be plus? No, this should be minus as well. So we can use minus here. So this is minus, not plus. So here it's also going to be minus 2y equals to 0. And uh, now look at what we did here. It's just to write this. Minus 5 is the same thing as minus 2x minus 3y. So here it's still a minus here. So now we can see we have minus minus here. So we can rewrite this as what? Well. This is the same thing as x minus 3y into 
x minus 2y equals to 0. Now, so what it means, is it means that this system, remember, this is the system we are working with, x squared minus 3xy plus what plus y squared equals to 4, and x squared minus 5xy plus 6y squared equals to 0. Now, this system is the same thing as this one. Now, the first equation remained the same. We didn't do anything to it. Right? But the second system, we factorize it. We change this equation. So please look at it. What we're saying is that this and this are the same. This one and what? And this one. They are the same because I just factorized this one to this one. So now we can write this system as uh, x minus 3y, x minus 2y equals to 0. So this is our equation 1 and this is our equation 2. Right now, if you look from equation two, what is the meaning of this? When you have two products giving us zero, it means that x minus three y equals to zero, or x minus two y is equals to zero. So this simply means x is equals to three y, or x is equals to two y. Okay, now we're going to use substitution method, right? So we have two values. So if x, so we'll do one, we say substitute x equals to 3y in what? In equation one. Because we have two cases, right? So substitute x is equal to 3y in equation 1. Remember, what is equation 1? Equation 1 is x squared minus 3xy plus y squared is equals to 4. So if we substitute x is equal to 3y, this will become 3y squared minus 3 times 3y times y plus y squared is equals to 4. And this is 9y squared minus 9y squared, as you can see, plus y squared, it's equals to 4, right? Now, 9y squared, and this will cancel. So we have y squared is equals to 4. And this means y is going to be plus minus square root of 4. So this is y is equals to plus minus 2, right? All right, now let's do something here. So if y is equals to 2, what does that mean? It means x. Remember, x is what? 3y. So x is 3y, uh, which means that x is equals to 3 times 2. So x is equals to 6. So it means that which solutions do we have here? So it means we have... 6 and 2 is a solution. All right. Then we still need to continue here. Um, here, we can take y to be what? Minus 2. If y is minus 2, x is also 3y. So x is going to be 3 times minus 2. So x is equals to minus 6. So it means we have another solution where x is minus 6 and y is minus 2. Right. Okay. Now, this is using x is equals to 3y. So let's see the other case. The other case is using what? Substitute x is equals to 2y also in equation one. Because remember, we have two cases, x is equals to 3y or x is equals to 2y. So what is that equation one is this one. 
and then 2y. So here you have 2y squared minus 3 times 2y times y plus y squared is equal to 4. And this is nothing but 4y squared minus 6y squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So 4y squared minus 6y squared will give us minus 2y squared plus y squared is equal to 4. So you see that minus 2y squared plus y squared will give us minus y squared is equal to 4, which means that y squared is minus 4. So it means that y is going to be root of plus minus minus 4, which is going to be uh, plus minus 2i. So we're going to reject this one. Why? Because it's complex, right? Yeah, it's a complex number. So we reject it because it's complex or imaginary now. So what that means is that this substitution will not help us. So it means we're going to have only two solutions. So our solution set for this problem is only 6, 2, and what? And minus 6, and what? Minus 2. So this is our A, this is B, this is C, and this is D, right? So what is A? Because we're asked to evaluate, uh, if you look at the question, we're asked to find AC plus BD, right? AC plus BD. So AC plus BD, it's simply six times minus six plus what? Two times minus two. And this is minus 36 minus four which is simply minus 40. 